uh, I know Zoom is, uh, is uh, a good way to do these meetings, but I know Rick's calling in when he gets the information, but go ahead and call the roll if you want to, and we'll get started. Evelyn Hill. Here. Scott Mann. Here. Freddie Phipps. Here. Rick Snyder. Mike Taylor. Here. Yeah. And we do have a quorum, so we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. And uh, we'll go ahead and look at uh, minutes from our previous meeting. You were given a copy of those things. Take a, take a minute to look those over and, and uh, I'll uh, be ready for a motion when you are. I'll make a motion, but my name hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion, but my name hasn't changed. Motion by Miss Evelyn Hill to uh, accept oh, these oh, minutes as they've been prepared. <laughs> Where I'm, I'm missing it. Where do you see Third the paragraph. Evelyn Hall? Yeah. Third paragraph. Oh, okay. I'll have to fix that. <laughs> With those corrections, we'll accept them with those corrections. Is there a second? I'll second. Second about Mr. Freddie Phipps. Is there any other uh, corrections or edits that need to be made? Here, none. Uh, Call the roll, please, Russell. Evelyn Hill. Hey, yes. Scott Mann. Yes. Freddie Phipps. Yes. Mike Taylor. Yes. Uh, next item, number three, is presentation of 2020-21 budget. Russell, where are you going to start today? Uh, let's back up, and I have brought back the highway department, the Fund 131. Okay. With, uh, I made a $258,000 cut, which is half of the difference between this year and what the estimated is. Okay. Uh, for next year. Uh, basically, basically what I cut is I cut the position, the vacancy that he was trying to put back, and I tried to scatter it to where asphalt and stone wouldn't have to take such a big, huge hit, but uh, I still basically ended up pulling about $100,000 out of asphalt and then seventy five dollars out of uh, stone. I took, you know, $25,000 from their equipment parts. 5,000 here, 2,000 there. I tried to spread it as easily as I could without having to have such a huge hit to those two big categories, or those two big items. But basically, Jeff's looked at it and he said that we'll just have to see what happens. But uh, that's just simply bringing it back, reducing it to $2,118,822 for next year. Do you have a password I can give you so I can send Mr. Rick? He didn't need a password, just hit hit the pound sign and it should let him in. Okay. So Jeff, Jeff's okay with those changes? Oh, I don't have it memorized. What's he want? Uh, we need the Wi-Fi password for here. And it's, it's just set up for us to do it. Joko Guest is Johnson, capital J, capital C, 2019, I believe. That, that's using our network as opposed to the school. Okay. Okay, Rick is, Rick just got it. Okay. So he should be. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. So basically, that's just bringing this back with a $258,000 cut to it. Okay. Any questions about that one? If for some reason the state was correct on the gas tax bill, their fund balance mm -hmm. is in the same Yeah. Well, I mean, it calculated the fund balance out today, and it's calculating it at 792000 but it'll okay. be more than that. So they're, they will be able to take that hit next year if, if, they, they, have. if they have to take right. it. So now, they can't do it many consecutive years, but they right. can take one hit. So you think we get about two hundred and seventy thousand dollars out of balance, according to, with the fuel tax difference? Yes. Uh, basically, we split that difference. Two hundred. I took two fifty eight out, left two fifty eight okay. in, splitting that. 
that $514,000 in half. Because if we have to cut $514,000, I mean, we're devastating that budget. Yeah, you're not going to do we'll have, He'll have to send people home. There's no way around it. There's absolutely no way around it. Gotcha. Okay. Then the others we'll move through real quick. I'll start with the drug fund 122. This is just simply bringing these to you for the first time. This is the part of the upper east Tennessee task force where certain monies, if it's they they keep it, they keep it straight to the sheriff's department. But basically, we budget about ninety six hundred dollars a year in revenue here that comes back in as far as drug control fines. Uh, from the, di the different courts that bring some money back in. But the, the biggest turning point is as, as the Sheriff's Department sells confiscated property that goes back into the drug fund throughout the year. And basically we budget for roughly half of the narcotics officer to cover just the salary, which is roughly $17,000 a year. And there's a little bit of money in there. Uh, from time to time we have to replenish the, the drug, uh, what I call it, the, the drug buy fund that they have at the sheriff's department and we use funds these funds to do that and then we are running veterinary services for the canines through here as well and that's roughly where we start the year and then as eddie sells things throughout the year then we add back into that which actually builds that fund balance back up because it's calculating the fund balance right now at forty six thousand, and i suspect that that <laughs> should be at least another ten to fifteen thousand higher than that by the time we get to year end so that, that one's a real cut and dry one there. Any questions there? I don't have any. And and I basically, I just sort of make a judgment call by looking at what's come in as far as some of these fees and uh, fines are concerned and just adjust them yearly as we have to. All right, then our next one would be debt service. Now this one here is using the estimated information that I gave you last week as far as what a penny would generate based on the numbers that Matthew had given us. Just as a reminder, keep in mind, what fund number is 151. 151. Sorry. Uh, I bet that's Rick right there. 471 Yeah, I think that's him. Rick, is that you? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, good. All right. Did you get your email that had all the attachments in it? Yes, sir. I'm following along. Okay. We're at a 151. Yep. And y'all just need to, you need to stop me at any point in time if you got questions. But basically, 151, um, just as a recap, this would be the first fund that we're dealing with that's going on the tax rate. And right now, a penny generates 31,781.94 as an estimate based on the numbers that Matthew had given me, pending anything that happens during the equalization board. And Matthew told me as of this afternoon, they still had no appointments for the equalization board with it starting to meet next week. But with that being said, and using the assumption of a 94% collection rate, which we've used now for a year, that means the penny's 29,875.02 currently. We're currently putting 16 cents into debt service, which generates would, gener would generate an estimated $478,000 next year. Then, because it, debt service is actually on the tax rate, then they get an, what's called an aggregate portion of the payment lieu of taxes, which is Cartel, which is another $5,000. Then if the rest of it's sort of just a judgment call as far as prior year collections, uh, clerk and master, and I'm gonna switch gears and look at my notes because I did make some changes to those, give me just a second. No, actually, I didn't change anything here. I basically left everything the same, $25,000 for prior year, $5,000 prior year clerk and master, $5,000 for interest and penalty. Now, the payment in lieu of taxes, TVA, this is something that's new. For the last couple of years, we've been getting a small TVA payment in addition to the big payment that we get from them as part of the revenue sharing that's in county general. But they actually send a small one that's a payment in lieu of tax that we spread across the aggregate and debt service would roughly get $200 for that. Uh, local option sales tax, 60000 Now, however, debt service is what's called the balance points for sales tax. 
basically we, we allocate what we're to allocate, we send, we give County General their portion, we give the library fund their portion, and then we give the schools their portion, the city their, their portion, and then we use debt service as that balance point. And as of the end of April, we had budgeted for 60,000, but we've actually collected almost 101,000. And I'll talk more about what potentially we could do with some of that excess, if not today, if not, we'll definitely get into that next week. Uh, the wheel tax goes in, debt services share, that's $15, based on 15,669 vehicles. Bank excise tax, bank excise tax is one that will fluctuate. And I actually, I, I moved it up $100 just to make even numbers as far as rounding was concerned. Even though we realized a little over 4,700, I'm not comfortable moving that because if the, if the economy stays the way it sort of is, is going, I think banks, a lot of the banks, the excess revenues and profit will start to go downhill as well. So that means that that number will go down. Uh, let's see, that's the bulk of it. Uh, telecommunications and the state revenue sharing it in 46852. This is a this one is similar to the hall income tax. It has a sunset date, which basically they're phasing it out. And I actually dropped it a thousand dollars as part of the anticipation it's going to start going down. So I went from 2,500 to 15 there. And then 264,154 dollars is transferred from the school department's budget as a contribution back into debt service is their portion of their bond payment. With all that being said, that's $1,082,913. Next year, we are to a tipping point. We like five years on the solid waste bond and five years on the school bonds, with, where we actually recall those and refinance those. We cut a couple of years off of that but we like eight years on the refinance of the jail. And so over the next five years, we'll see those two drop off, but we will have to realize a three year, three years we will have a balloon payment of a little over a million dollars to finish paying off the jail bond with anticipation by 2028, the county is debt free. So you'll see that we'll start ticking, ticking up more on the principal, and especially we saw a pretty big sizable jump with the school bonds, which is 611,000. And then the rest of that is simply the interest that's paid on that, as well as we do have some what's called other debt insurance charges that happen throughout the year that region sends back to us as far as part of their management of all of this on this platform. With all that being said, it takes a million seventy-two thousand four hundred and fifty dollars to be able to meet our debt obligations. That means that at this point, we're banking on the front end ten thousand four hundred and sixty-three dollars into fund balance for for debt service next year. That number will be more because naturally, as we overrealize and collect above ninety-four and those kind of things like that. Any questions? I know that's a mouthful. I don't have any questions. Anybody else have questions? No, I'm good. I mean, like grades, then it keeps in town. Yeah, it has to say what Well, it currently it's $40, and it's a private act, right. and you would have, to go, you have to go through the process to raise it. It would be a private act to do either way. Either way, to increase it or decrease, decrease it. it yeah. Or even actually change the allocation, like if you wanted to say shift ten dollars to the county general, it would actually take a change in the private act to be able to do that allocation method as well. All right, then our next one will be general capital projects, which is fund one seventy one. Again, this one's on the tax rate. Next year, currently nine cents, that would generate $268,875. I basically made just a few little minor changes. Uh, wheel tax, the wheel tax that goes into general capital projects goes toward the bridge fund, which basically is used by the highway department. And I've actually adjusted it to reflect what it actually brings in rather than that estimated number of 31,338. Uh, bank excise tax, again, that's just a filler in the dark. 
Then the next big one would be state revenue sharing on telecommunications. I'm dropping it a couple hundred dollars as we look at sunsetting that revenue out. And this will be where the grant that the mayor talked about last week is going. The local government stimulus one-time grant of $637,865. We're gonna hit this into general capital projects because the cash flow is easier to manage with that than opposed, opposed putting it into county general. So you put that in there, and all that being said, that would bring it to $958,566 worth of revenue for next year. Then we'll get into some of the expenditures. One of the things that we talked about uh, when Eddie was here, when we were talking about patrol cars and the cost, for years, at least for the last six years, the commission has always put $33,000 in toward the purchase of a new patrol car. Well, $33,000 will not cover that now. It takes about $36,000 just to currently buy the vehicle, not counting the outfitting, it's roughly another $10,000. So what I'm proposing that we're doing doing here with law enforcement equipment is moving that from $33,000 to $50,000, which will give enough for general capital projects to buy one patrol vehicle and outfit it completely currently. So that would be from 33 to 50, which is roughly $17,000. So that's the low myth and also we talked about the true utility, uh, got it in here, but uh, the grant you're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, 637, didn't we go to purchase? Aren't we going to purchase one? We are going to purchase a vehicle with that. Is That's what's proposed. It was in the grant as okay. the mayor submitted it. But that's in addition to this. Yes. There will be a second. There will be a second one. Really, with that grant. Uh, so if the state approves it as such. Please find a way to keep them from resting apart. <laughs> yeah. And then in the on but down through there, you'll get down to category 91190, other general other general government projects. This is actually where that six hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars is at. Now, one of the things that the mayor and I talked about would be potentially we have a couple of items that are on there that deal with the courthouse that we will probably have to have some service of an architect and or engineer, and that's dealing with the HVAC and potentially the elevator. So what I basically did is I just took a sh shot in the dark and figured 5% of those two amounts, and I've actually put that into architect. I don't know if 5% will cover it or not, but I basically have put a little bit of money in there to cover some advertising and $11,250 to cover uh, A&E fees. That's in addition usually, to the I'll... What's that? Uh... Usually Shanks will charge somewhere between three and four percent, I think, but it, it might go high as five. I'm not sure. I just I took a, I was thinking it was somewhere around five, so yeah. I basically just took a shot of eleven thousand two hundred fifty dollars, and that is in addition to the six hundred and thirty-seven thousand. Three hundred eighteen thousand dollars of that six thirty-seven is in building improvements, which is basically the roof, the courthouse uh, renovate uh, update, those kind of things like that. Then there's 20,000, and I, I use communication equipment as a balance point to balance everything up. 20,865, that would be for the Sheriff's Department where they were talking about adding an additional repeater as well as looking at replacing a couple of, a couple of the other aging ones. $46,000 for a law enforcement vehicle, that's the second patrol car. And then 253,000 in other capital outlay, and that's the chairs at the courthouse, the RTP match, any kind of modifications to the scales at the solid waste, uh, patching part of that parking lot down there at solid waste, the $80,000 for the fire department, and the dehumidifier that's proposed for, for the Department of Human Services. And then in that 707, that's that 318, which is building improvement, that's the 150 for the HVAC, the 75 for the elevator, $15,000 for the doors at the courthouse, the 50,000 for the senior roof, center roof, Twenty thousand for the tax assessor's roof, eight thousand dollars for the Kellogg building roof. All that rolls up into all of that, which makes the total of six hundred and forty-nine thousand six hundred and fifteen dollars, and we're offsetting six hundred and thirty-seven eight sixty-five of that in revenue coming back in. Whether well, the revenue will come in after this, will be scrapped. Yes, we will scrap this. Currently, we uh, the elevator is down. 
and the uh, air conditioning suffering. <laughs> so when it rains, it pours. <laughs> I think we have some sort of surge or something. Knock it off. That's my guess. That's I saw I saw Mount Electric out outside the building there working one day last week over on that pole behind the funeral. Right. That's where we had the issue before. Yeah. Hopefully we can blame them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm okay. So that's what happened last time. It, it was a surge that they had actually caused. Out. Did they ever send a text? I don't remember seeing anything, but that doesn't necessarily mean it didn't come. But well, they've got insurance. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, uh, Dustin is tracking the cost. We're, we're going to get with uh, the electric company to see what's going on. Okay. And if that's happened a couple of times in uh, somewhere in this budget, we might be looking at some surge protectors. Mm-hmm. It could be a potential. Uh, the computers, they had not had them. <laughs> yeah. Which most of those are protected by a surge yeah. battery backup. Get a whole service surge Maybe hit the elevators and the heat system and that type of thing. As will too. And then that's putting, moving on then, if there's any more questions about that before I move on, I'm sorry. Then moving on, $31,338 into bridge construction, which is offset by the money that comes back in wheel tax. Then the next one is transportation equipment. Uh, is the $165,000 that, that we're currently putting in to help cover the cost of the purchase of buses. Uh, currently, the uh, we do have a little bit of a reserve to help cover buses. We did pull from some of that this year to be able to purchase the three that they did purchase, but that's the 165 that we that's been going in for the last several years. And then $58,610 transfers out back to the highway department. Uh, currently, what I've been doing is we've been applying that 58610 toward their leases, their capital leases that they have on some of their equipment that they're leasing. Uh, that doesn't cover all of it, but it goes a fair way of, to help cover all of that. With all that being said, that's $961,763, which means that I'm proposing that we use about $3,200 of the fund balance to balance this to be able to cover all of those things that we're doing as well to cover the the additions that I put in for the architect's fees, some advertising, as well as that $17,000 to cover increasing what we're putting in for the patrol, for the patrol vehicle. And currently, there's about $800,000 in general capital projects fund balance. So $3,200 is just a small drop in the bucket to it. Yeah. So that's one one seventy one. Okay. Thank you. I'm okay with that. You okay. Then our next little one is 172, which is community development. Uh, this is just the one that we basically use to help cover some of our costs, like at DHS, uh, the Kellogg building, uh, some little quirky things. We pay a water bill for adult education from here. We run some of the Harbin Hill expenses for the house that the county owns that MRA uses. The uh, electricity and the water bill we pay from community development for that building as well. But basically, it's roughly release rental income that comes back in that keeps this fund going with a big chunk of that coming from the Department of Human Service, Children's Services, Jones Hardwood, and we still do receive a payment from Allegiance Footwear currently uh, for that, and that money dumps back in to community development. Chair, keep Park still coming too. It, it comes, but it goes into the county general budget. And that's roughly somewhere between ninety-five to $100,000 a year. I, just use $100,000. Uh, then other state revenues that we also, this is a, a good quirky place that we run the three-star grant. And the current three-star grant that we have run through, is it November of this year, Mike? Or? Yes. It, I know it crosses fiscal years. 
and most of that money is ear, that money is actually earmarked for the school system, and they front the money, and they'll actually invoice us. I'll reimburse them, and then we'll actually I'll actually file the reimbursement request back to Three Star for the money to come back into the, into into this budget. There's the fifty thousand dollars for that. That's about hundred. It's one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of revenue, and we have about seventy thousand dollars worth of expense, which fifty thousand that is Three Star. But there's just little oddities like the electricity and the water and the sewer. There's some money for building repairs and maintenance, like to cover if we need to mow at one of these sites or something like that, to where we we got some money to be able to cover some of that stuff. Not a lot goes in into this other than that. Any questions about that one? Are we going to need to allocate any additional funds due to Northeast being somewhat out of the picture for mowing maintenance? Well, you know, I know they do a lot of the mowing. I didn't, I, I didn't hear. Uh, I didn't hear Scott's question. He's asking about. Where Northeast has been real good, the community crews to be able to keep some of the mowing done, like for instance, like up at DHS, because I know that, yes. that up there is getting extremely high. The Kellogg, the Kellogg to, talk, is another one. I talked to Dustin about that today about uh, DHS, and we're wondering if we can't get that reimbursed through some of the COVID monies uh, that the uh, state is offering if we hire a private person to mow that. And he was going to check, I think. With Mr. Adams today, said so if he could go ahead and mow it, because we are getting behind up there, and then try to recoup that money through the COVID funds. Okay, I mean that's that's a good shot. I mean because we are trying to accumulate some of those expenses to see what happens. So, any questions about anything that I've presented from drug fund, highway fund, debt service, general capital projects, or community development? I don't have any. All right, well, then we'll do the big one, County General. Now, do you want the good news or the bad news first? <laughs> bad well, first. Good news first and last. All right. Well, just so that everybody will know, this budget, what you have in front of you has everything in it. Uh, it has all of the wish lists. Have... The... What's that? Does it have a raise in it for the employees? The only thing that's not in there is a raise. We'll have to add a raise to this figure. And I've got some numbers for that because based on the conversation that you and I had, had a couple of weeks ago. As of right now, with some of the revenue cuts and recommendations that I'll make as we go through, we're out of balance $376,000. Uh, one of the things that the mayor and I talked about was that we're in a strange circumstance as far as dealing with all this mess that we're dealing with the pandemic. Uh, last year, uh, county employees received a 3% cost of living increase. And typically, we do not do back-to-back -back COLA increases. And one of the things that the mayor and I talked about was doing a one-time bonus or doing a percentage increase. It takes roughly the same amount of money to give a $500 bonus as it does to actually give a 2% COLA or cost of living increase. It's within five or $6,000 difference. So basically, based on that conversation that, that we had had, and I believe, Mike, I'm hopefully I'm not putting words in your mouth here, but you kindly felt that if it was all possible, it would be a good, good incentive for us to actually see about trying to give a COLA increase again as opposed to giving a one-time bonus. I always felt like that builds up the base salary, and especially for, for our long-term employees, it's going to help them when retirement time comes, where a bonus won't, won't be figured into those kind of things. Now, for the bonus, PCRS actually throws the bonuses out. They're not used in what's called the, count, the final compensation calculation. I think it makes people want to stay. It does. I mean, and there's two, there's two things here. You know, the, the, there's a difference. The, the bang for your buck with the bonus is, it puts that money in their hands all at once as opposed to spreading it throughout the year, but when it's gone, it's gone. Whereas if we actually do a 2% or whatever it happens to be, 
cost of living or a COLA adjustment, we're actually adding that to that base, which alludes back to what the mayor's mentioning, but that helps with the long-term folks with the longevity that it adds to the salary base as far as retirement is concerned. And it would take roughly $56,000 to give a bonus of $500 as opposed to a 2%, which is 61,000. So we, it's very comparable with a difference of about $7,000. So we would have to add that amount to that 376 to get the true out of balance factor at this point. And I didn't know if y'all wanted to discuss that this week or we'll build more into that next week. Um, My vote, I always like the cost of living in 3%. Okay. Me too. Okay. 376. Plus another 61, we would be four. We're right at 4:30, and I have 4:30. 4:30. 4:30. by the penny. Penny's roughly 29, say 30,000. That'll give us a good answer. That would be probably about 12 or 13 cents. 14. Uh, 14. So we're, we're to, to do that with with everything in there. It's then it would be 15 cents on the tax rate. Now, however. I can do some, as I call it, finagling. Uh, remember when I alluded to some of the excess sales taxes in, in debt service? We're sitting on roughly about $6.6 .6 million in a given time in debt service. And as we pay off that debt, we will, if it's me or whoever happens to be here, one of the recommendations that I would make is we pay that debt off and we no, no, no longer need those funds in debt service to shift that to general capital projects and build that fund balance because then that gives the commission liberty to say if you want to do a $3.5 million addition to the jail and you've got $6.5 million in your general capital projects fund, you pay for it as you go, it's paid for, there's no bonds, whatever it happens to be. And then still carry roughly about six to six and a half million dollars in debt service that if the county were to get into a situation that they couldn't pay for it as they went and needed to go back to the open market and actually do bonds or whatever it would happen to be, then that money is there available there as well to be able to help cover part of, to get the equity bit for us to be able to actually borrow that money to do, to do that. That would be one thing. But looking at that, we roughly need $60,000 or $5,000 a month to hit into debt service to make that work. I would be comfortable roughly shifting about another forty to forty-two thousand dollars of that out that we could put into County General and basically increase. We're currently putting thirty-five hundred dollars in addition to. There's some little quirky things that go in. We would roughly put another forty-two thousand dollars that are that's dedicated to County General, which would drop that four thirty down to about three ninety, and then. I can, and this is something I was going to ask the mayor, if what I can do is prepare for next week, is go back through the budget and do an analysis. There are some places that we can cut. Uh, I know I know the sheriff made a comment that he was kosher if we take those two deputy, those two correct CO positions out, which is roughly about $70,000. And there are some other areas that we could look at that we could take some of the requests out. Now, some departments will not have anything touched to them, other departments will. That would be, I need to do an analysis and look at some historical trends and some other things to be able to, to be able to recommend that back to you next week. Just for round numbers, could we pull, like we've got that 50000 for the, the cruiser, if we made that forty six. that'd be another, forty six will cover one, right? Yes. Would that be prudent to pull that this year and just to try to? Well, that's in general capital projects, so which is a totally different fund. fund that yeah. The only way we've got to do that is, is with general capital projects, the only funding mechanism we have is, is, is property tax. Uh -huh. So we would have to start looking at shifting property tax to be able to do that. So adding the 42, taking the 70, that gets you to 10, 6. All right. So. And honestly, if we take the two COs out, that's roughly 70. Right. And I know that we probably could trim at least under 20 to 25 across the, the department. So 
some of them may not like the cuts or the recommendations, but it is what it is because $25,000, that's almost another penny in the tax rate. Then at that point, then we would have a true basis of exactly what it would take to actually balance it. Assuming that you all accept my recommendations on the revenue here in just a few minutes. But that's pretty where, that's pretty where we'll be staying. I think that's a, a pretty good recommendation on your part, Russell, to, to okay. do it that way. I, okay. I think that's real. Okay. Then I will actually start working on going back through and I will pull out and have a list of recommendations at some potential areas that we can't cut the next week. How does the rest of the budget committee feel about that? Uh, so what would this bring us down to? Just those two brings you down to ten and six, make a few more cuts, so you're still probably going to look at ten to twelve, give yourself a little buffer zone. Um, I mean total total shortfall. Oh, uh, we were three ninety, we were three ninety minus the two cruisers. Is that right? About, no, the two correctional officers that Eddie was proposing. That okay. Would three, that would get us to three twenty roughly. Okay which is a little over 10 cents on the rate. And you want, you want to raise it enough this year so you don't have to do nothing next year or the year after. Because next year's reappraisal, and then next year's the election. And I do not recommend that we try to raise the <laughs> certified rate on the, on the reappraisal because that is a pain in the butt. Because we've done it before and it's an extra meeting and a bunch of other stuff a lot more that we have to publicize in the paper saying that we're going to bump the new certified rate. You'd be better off if you went 15 this time not to have to go any next time because of that reappraisal. But that's some food for thought there. Let's look okay. a little further before we talk about 15 cents. About 15 cents. <laughs> All right, All right, basically then, looking at the revenue for county general. Currently we're putting 94 cents on the tax rate in and that's going to roughly generate $2,808,000 next year. I've gone down and I've sort of taken an, an analysis of looking at trends, and I'm going to recommend that we bump prior year collections for the trustee from $115,000 to $120,000. But I'm going to take $10,000, I'm going to take that back by decreasing the amount that the clerk and master is currently collecting. Uh, we're seeing more and more with the tax sales that we have folks that are coming in and paying the taxes before it actually ever gets to the point that the clerk of master is trying to do the collection. So we're seeing a drop off on that, but at the same token, we're seeing <coughs> excuse me, an increase in prior year collections with the trustee as well as the interest and penalty. Right? Interest and penalty, leave it at 22.5. Pick up taxes, that's, a, that's just one that some years we have them, some years we don't. 2,500.00. Uh, payment in lieu of taxes, TVA, that's that little quirky amount that we received, which is roughly $1,115. Currently, on the aggregate, uh, County General gets $29,515 of the park sale payment. I currently have sales, local option sales tax at $161,622. But what makes that up is the payment of $10,734 that was here prior to us last year and then $2,500 additional that we allocated into sales tax, and then a $234.45 payment, which is called a partner's payment that comes in. All of those combined times 12 equals that 161. And what we, if we look at moving, let's say $3,500 more a month, that's 42,000 a year, that 25 would actually go to 6,000. So then we're roughly putting 72,000 additional total above what is the old base into into the, into the sales tax. Did that make sense? <laughs> then the next one is hotel motel tax, and I'm actually cutting that because I do not anticipate that we will come close to $18,000. But I'm leaving $18,000 because that is the county's, the county's portion of what we pay to the operation of, of the Welcome Center. $15,000 goes to the actual operation and the salary of the director, and then we currently reimburse the Welcome Center 
for their property taxes that they pay. So they hit the tax base and we give it back to them, which is roughly another three thousand dollars, which makes eighteen thousand. So if we leave eighteen thousand in for hotel motel, that offsets that eighteen thousand that we flow back out and see if we if we can come close to hitting that next year. Litigation taxes, those are give and take. Uh, I left them as respective 8,000 and 40,000 apiece. Litigation tax for the next one, which is the jail workhouse courthouse, I left it 15,000. Business tax, this is what Tammy's office collects. We typically see April, May, and June as being our big months that business taxes are due. And we collected roughly 50% of that through the end of April. I suspect that we'll get a big chunk of that in May and in June to hit that 70,000 mark. Mixed drink tax, this is one that has gone down. Uh, with the sale of alcohol in the city limits, people buy it there as opposed to buying it somewhere else. And, and a lot of that mixed drink tax came from the golf course when they operated a restaurant there that doesn't exist now. So I just basically cut that from 2,000 to 500 dollars. If um, someone owns from some of these other places, we'll pick it back. Then it potentially could come back up. Okay. I'm thinking we do actually do get some of that, but we don't. We don't currently. We don't get anything from the tax. No. We, the only thing that we're collecting off of anything that they sell would be if it is beer. We do. We're still collecting the taxes on wholesale beer. That's it. We collect nothing on any liquor or anything else that's sold. Just the beer. Right. That's your big argument in the field about all the tax money that alcohol is going down mm -hmm. the well, well, it's, it's sure helping the city. But it helps the city and it helps the school system because the schools, any sales tax is collected within the city limits. That is a 50 50 cost share 50% to the city, 50% to the school. The county actually receives nothing to that. Bank excise tax, I left at 21000 Wholesale beer tax, I left at 120 because it usually takes us till June to hit that 120 mark. Cable TV franchise, I left it at 70,000. We're on target to actually probably hit about 73, 74,000 there, but I would like for us to collect that a couple of years before we move that. Deer permits, this is another one that's just sort of hit and miss this year. We're having, an, we're probably going to be close to hitting that $2,000 mark for beer permits. Other permits that are things like some of the specialty tags and things that are not dedicated for schools. If you buy one that, that happens to be for the county, then the county gets that excess on that specialty tag. Then we get over into circuit court. This is again fines. We've got just regular fines. We've got jail fees, DUI treatment, the data entry for the circuit court. Uh, their portion that they collect from the circuit court for this courtroom security fee. I lift all of that at the same rate as it was last year. Then we get down into criminal court. We deal with officer costs. I'm going to bump that $1,000 and move it to six because we've been hitting at that $5,000 mark for a couple of years now. And we'll actually probably be closer to 56, 57, maybe 5,800 by the time we get to the end of the year. Drug control fines, uh, that's just one of those. Drug court fees, that $2,250 we actually remit back to the state, and that $2,250 is combined with a couple of others that make up $6,000 expenditure that's later in the budget, so they offset themselves. Then we get into general sessions, again, fine, $10,000, I just left that one where it currently is. Littering, some years we collect money for littering, sometimes we don't. I left it at $100. Uh, general sessions court. Officer cost, I'm recommending we bump that $1,000 to $16,000. Fish and game, $300 is just a shot in the dark. Drug control fines, for some reason, we're, we're collecting more drug control fines that the county gets to keep in Sessions Court. So I'm going to recommend we bump that to $5,000 since we already collected $5,400 through the end of April. Uh, drug court, that $3,750 is due back to the state of Tennessee. Jail fees. This happens to be one. We're collecting more in fines, but we're not putting, evidently, we're not collecting the jail fees. So I'm recommending that we knock that from 25 to 18,000, which is more of the figure that we potentially could hit this year. Uh, data entry for general sessions court. Again, that's just a shot in the dark. We're closer to probably 5,500 as opposed to 65. We recommend we cut it $1,000. 
courtroom security fee, 5,500. Then we get to Chancery Court. This is some years we hit 750, some years we don't with officers and costs, I just left it. Then entry for her office and as well she does collect some courtroom security at two, fees at $200. Then we get over into, uh, into other fines, forfeitures, and penalties. This is a new one and it, some years it's up, some years it's down. This is basically driver's license, reinstatement, and restitution. Uh, this is a state, it comes in from the state automatically that Tammy, that Tammy collects. Some years we hit it, some years we don't. We're going to be closer to a thousand this year. I'm recommending we go to a thousand next year. Any questions so far? I don't have any. Okay. No, I'm good. Okay. Then moving on, the next one is self insurance premiums and contributions. Uh, this is a jail type. Uh, collection. It basically deals with if we have an inmate who has commercial insurance, uh, we have the right to build that if we have to have, if we have to seek medical, uh, any kind of medical treatments, we can ask that their commercial insurance pay that and then they would be responsible for any co-payment or something like that. That's sort of one of those real quirky things. Uh, we cut it to $2,500 a couple of years ago. We're going to be closer to hitting $2,000 this year as opposed to $25. I'm knocking it $500. Other general service charges, this is a book, what they call bookend fee. Uh, some years we hit it, some years we don't. We're closer to $4,500 this year as opposed to $6. I'm knocking it down $1,500. Airport fees, uh, this is uh, another one that sort of hit and missed. We basically, we collect $50 a month times 12 or $600 a year from uh, Dave Garris as rent for the use of the airport. And then the rest of it's based on whether or not he's able to collect hangar fees. And we're going to be closer to 1500 as opposed to 25, so I'm knocking in $1,000. Poppy fees, down 500 to 25. Telephone commission, this is another one that's from the jail, it just depends. Uh, Last several years, we've been hitting around 17.5. We're already at 28, probably be closer to 32. I'm gonna take a chance, let's go 25. Vending machine sales, that's another one's hit and miss. I just knocked it to $100. Probation fees are the same. Data processing for the sheriff, that's one that varies from year to year. We're already close to 1,500. I'm gonna use 1,500 for next year. The uh, sexual offender registration, that $1,500 offsets the $1,500 that's in the budget. Got a processing fee for the county clerk. Some years she's up, this year she happens to be. She's gonna be closer to $1,100 by year end. I will recommend we do $1,100. Vehicle, regis vehicle registration reinstatement. This is one of the new ones that we've been collecting for a couple of years. It's not a big money generator, but we're gonna be closer to $750, which is $250 more than what we had in the budget. Any questions? Doing a lot of cutting. I am doing a lot of cutting. I'm gonna put some of it back. <laughs> Investment income. Uh, we budgeted for 75. The trustee and I figure that we're gonna be closer to 70 this year. Interest rates only continue to go down because of the economic circumstances. So I'm gonna recommend we whack at 5,000 to 70 and hope we get it next year. Mountain Youth Academy, this is where that revenue, rental revenue comes back in. And there are some other little quirky things that go into that, like the agricultural lease that we have down at the, at the, uh, trans, at the industrial park and some other quirky things go into this as well. But we basically use 6,000 a month times 12, 72,000 that comes from Mountain Youth Academy as far as guaranteed rental income. Supplies and materials, some years were up, some years were down. So I'm cutting it in half to 15. Commissary, that 50,000 offsets expense that's already in the budget. The 505-500 for sale of gasoline offsets that expense that's already in the budget. Retiree entrance payments, this is just the money that we collect from our retirees that have some form of insurance policy that are that's still with us that we pay on their behalf. Miscellaneous refunds, $14,700. This is what makes that up. $4,750 for the judicial commissioners from the town of Mountain City. $3,250 for the hyper call-out system, which is roughly half of that maintenance cost back that we pay a year 
with the MA. Uh, Jason requested, made a request to the city to increase to increase their payment for EMA services from $1,250 to $1,500. And then Matthew uh, will bill the city for $5,200 for their parcel, for what's called the city parcel cost share. And then we will deal with the reappraisal in the next budget cycle, which makes that $14,700 up. And then we amend that as necessary, anything above that that's not in the budget. Then we get over to fees and lieu of salary. This is basically what the officials turn over to us in some of their fees that they collect in lieu of salary. County clerk, I'm gonna leave it 205. Circuit court, we made a cut here a couple of years ago and she is on target to hit $50,000 this year. So I'm gonna recommend we bump that to 50 and see what happens. General Sessions, they will, it will actually exceed 115,000, but I'm going a little smaller bump with it, 5,000 to 120,000. And then, Clerk and Master, I will recommend we cut 20,000 to 50. Register of Deeds, she's hitting above the $65,000 mark, which I'm going to shoot for 70 with her, 250 with the Sheriff, and then 220 with the Trustee. Exactly what fees that the sheriff's collect. That's any idea. That's a question I can't answer. I, honestly, I do not know. It looks like zero. Um, it is. Some years they collect. Some. It's it's all based on how it's turned over. So. Then we get over into a lot of the state revenues. Juvenile services program. This is where we operate the safe baby court, as well as we have a nine thousand uh, dollar contract with the state to help offset part of the the um, youth service officer salary, which is 9000 a year, which makes it 59000 Airport maintenance, this is the uh, maintenance contract that we have with the state. It was 15000 this year. We'll not have the new contract to sometime in July, so I'm going to use the 15000 that we currently have as that base. Aging program, we're currently getting $19,200 from aging to help offset part of the senior center operations costs, which helps to cover a small portion of Kathy's salary and a very small portion of, of Terry's salary. And then $30,000 for my ride, which is the reimbursable grant that we currently have, which is 49.2. Then we get over into law enforcement training stipends. This is the, the flow through money that comes in from the state. Uh, the state actually increased that from 600 to $800. So we had an increase from 7,200 to 12,000. So I went to 12,000, but that offsets with the expense already there. Litter, litter program is the litter control grant, which is 44.2. Then we get down into other state income tax. Uh, this is the whole income tax. And I actually went back to look and see what the phase out is. We are, next year will be the last year that we will receive any kind of payment in hall income tax. It actually drops to 1%. It actually dropped to 1% January 1 of this year. So we will collect part of this year and part of next year with that phasing it out in 21. So I basically whack that from 25 to $10,000 and that $10,000 will sunset out for the 21-22 budget. Beer tax, I left to 20,000. Uh, vehicle certification, title fees, 20,000. Alcoholic beverage tax, I left to 45,000. And then we get over into state revenue sharing with TVA. This is one that, that fluctuates from year to year. And basically how I come up with this is I basically take the payments that we're receiving this year, and that's what I budget for next year. And we budgeted 515, but we're actually going to collect about 540,000. So I'm recommending that we go ahead and bump that, that 25,000 and see what happens. State revenue sharing with telecommunications. This is another one at sunset as it phases itself out over the next couple of years. I'm knocking it to nine. Then we get to contract your prisoner board. And I know we had a lot of discussion about that when the sheriff was here a couple of weeks ago. But this is what I came up with. 45 inmates, $42 a day, 365 days, would generate $690,000. That is the number that we're hit, that we're getting close to hitting. We're hitting somewhere in that neighborhood. And I thought that was a good good starting point, which basically we're cutting $110,000. Now we can increase that, but 
to me right now, 45 seems to be that average number that averages itself over the four plus season that we're actually seeing on a daily basis. And last year it was 677. Yeah. And, I, and we're on target to hit that hit somewhere in that ballpark number again because what you're seeing is the state is notoriously bad to be two to three months behind on the payment. So we're probably looking at a payment through February. So we've still got March, April, <coughs> and June, which is four more payments, which would hit us if they're, and they average between 50 to 55,000 a month. But I would actually have to check with the trustee and see exactly what month we are. I uh, just about say we're probably with February payments what's come in. So, so that was my take on basically taking the conversation that we had a couple of weeks ago, and that's what I came up with. I think I think that's a good place to, to park right there. Okay. So that's where I, that's how I arrived at the 690. Register supplement, that's 15164 that comes in. That's it, pretty well standard that comes in every year. Other state revenues, this is where we're, there's a couple of things here. The DGA contract, the direct grant assistance contract that we have with the Department of Health that operates part of part of our folks at the health department, it's $401,000 next year. The DMRA tourism grant, that is in the county's name that we will run through the county general side, but DMRA gets the, is the benefactor. That's 8875. And then the sheriff's department uh, <clears throat> did inform me that they will have a $3,500 traffic safety enforcement grant next year. So all those combined are the $414,000. Homeland Security, this is EMA. This is the offset that we receive from the state help offset the part of the salary cost of the EMA director, which is 27,000. Other direct federal revenue, this is another one that's a shot in the dark. Uh, we do get a payment that comes in in late June from the federal government, which is from the Land Bureau. It'll average anywhere between 45, $60,000. And then we do uh, get a small payment from Social Security for any inmate that is being detained at the at the sheriff's department in the jail, is eligible for Social Security, we do get a $250 payment a month for each month that they're incarcerated, and usually it's about $2,500 to $3,000 a year that we receive from that. Then we get over into contributions. Uh, this is where the $5,000 that traditionally the, the city has put into the senior center. Uh, I have not had a chance to call Sheila to find out if, if the city's entertaining possibly increasing that. And then the tourism grant that I mentioned earlier, there is a 50-50 match. There's $8,000, $8,875 worth of state money, which means there's an $8,875 of local money match. And DMRA has committed that they will transfer that money, that match to us to be a to offset that. That would make up the 13875 And then contracted services, this is the $17,000 that is part of the portion of the narcotics officer that we that we transfer that I transfer from the drug fund, and then $232,169 to offset part of the SRO expenses from the school department next year. And then the only other thing, and this is one that just depends on the collection, uh, is driver's license convenience fees that the clerk county clerk collects. Uh, we're, close, we're going to hit closer to $9,000 this year, and so therefore I'm recommending we bump that $1,000. All that said and done, we have a grand total of $7,532,798 worth of revenue at this point. Offset seven seven million nine hundred and seven thousand. Seven million nine oh nine four seventeen plus whatever is decided to do as far as anything additional to the county employee. So we're probably setting somewhere around seven million nine hundred and seventy thousand dollars worth of expense to seven million five hundred dollars worth of revenue, which gets us to that four hundred and forty thousand dollar gap that we currently have. Any questions? 
Was that the good news or the bad news? Well, I guess that it's the good and the bad. <laughs> it's all of them. It is. Uh, I did receive notice from uh, the state today as far as health insurance increase. Uh, I was budgeting for a 5% mid-year. It actually is a 5.4%. And I've actually already made those adjustments in the budget to reflect that. Uh, for the county to cover the 2.7% the mid-year increase on insurance policies would be $18,362, which is already part of that $7.9 million that's in expenditures. So with the addition of the raise for the county employees, you're saying we're, we're about 440000 out to begin with before you start making some adjustments. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. Potential adjustments. Potential adjustments. Potential yeah. adjustments. That's pretty well where we stand. You know, one of the things that really saved us from a tax increase last year was that moving the collection rate from 93 to 94%. That's what saved us. And the fact that we were coming off of realizing a TCRS employer drop in the percentage. But unfortunately, we're circling back around, so now we're actually absorbing that back in, that, that state TCRS savings back in. So unfortunately, that's where we stand. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Russell? Is that the recommendation of, of the budget committee members there that uh, Russell prepares that uh, those cuts or potential cuts for next week and we come back and talk it over then? That's the only chance you have. Yeah, I agree. Because I, you know, yeah. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty confident we can take some out. Yeah. There's, we can't take 400. Well, we can take 440,000 out, but it's one of the <laughs> same comment I made about the highway department. We're going to devastate this budget. So the only way we can do it is get into personnel to do it. So you're already taking 260 pretty much out of their budget already. So I have. If, if you added that to the other, you're looking at uh, close to $700,000. Mm -hmm. True. Wow. Russell, do you have anything else? Nope, that's it tonight. Is there any other matters that uh, need to come forward this budget committee tonight? Here, none. Is there a motion to adjourn until next week? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Scott Mast. Is there a second? Miss Hill. Miss Hill. All in favor say aye. Ah, ah, we'll see you next week. Yeah.